Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi yassir wa la tu'sir ya karim. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta taj'alul hazna wa sa'ba idha shi'ta sahla amma ba'd A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu اتقوا الله وذروا ما بقي من الربا إن كنتم مؤمنين فإن لم تفعلوا فأذنوا بحرب من الله ورسوله وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ الحمد لله رب العالمين Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allow us together in this colorful, very colorful event and insha'Allah will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I would like to express my utmost gratitude to the organizers to invite me to, to share some of my thoughts in this event. And I would say that I'm the only lecturer in, yeah, who, who is Malaysian in this event for this year. Alhamdulillah, bihada ni'mah. And inshallah, the topic that I will share with you is with regard to how can we make our wealth blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not only our wealth but also our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him already stated a lot of things with regard to uh, the importance of us to know what is halal and what is haram when it comes to when it's come to how we earn our earnings and incomes and how we spend our incomes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has mentioned in one of the surah in the Quran, Surah Al-Qalam, أَنْ كَانَ ذَا مَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَإِذَا تُسْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this verse, those who has, those who has a lot of wealth, and also has a lot of children. In most of the time, when we advise them with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will reply by saying that, again, that is tales of the men of old. So we have to be very sure about ourselves in this regard. Because sometimes when we manage to have a lot of wealth, properties, and we are being uh, seen as a very successful person in our life and have a good title, have a good you know, uh, status in, the, in our community. Sometimes we are not to scrutinize ourselves, especially with regard to our income in terms of how we want to spend it. Because sometimes those people, they are only relying on their logical on their own reasons and there is no reasons for them to scrutinize their income from the perspective of Islam. This is why Allah and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him already said Surely you will you will witness there will be a time before the hereafter, before the hereafter, before the Yawm al Qiyamah, there are many people, there are many peoples, they are not giving any attention 
to their incomes and spending whether or not they are coming from halal okay so we don't want to become those person who neglect this part of things because we know in order for us to be a successful person in the hereafter in Yawmul Mahshar we have we will be scrutinized in a very great details with regard to five items that has been said by the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet say la tazulu qadam abdi adam min indi rabbihi yawm al qiyamah hatta yusal an khams an umrihi fi ma afna wa an shababihi fi ma abla wa an malihi min ayna iktasabahu wa fi ma anfaqahu wa an ilmihi fi ma amila fi so the prophet say the two feet of son of adam will not move on the day of judgment in front of his lord until he is asked and questions about five matters the first is about his life and how he exhausted number two is about his youth what did he consume in it and number three is about his wealth and number four also about his wealth how he did earn how did he earn his wealth and how did he spend it on and how much did he act upon what he knew so the hadith is narrated by imam tirmidhi and and stated as an authentic hadith by albani so the hadith clearly give us a priority between five things that will be scrutinized by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two out of five is regard is with regard to our wealth so that's why the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said inna li kulli ummatin fitnah wa fitnatu ummatil mal upon every nation there will be a temptation and the temptation of my nation is wealth and also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam already mentioned in other hadith he said that idha zuhira zina war riba fi qaryatin faqad ahillu bi anfusihim adhab allah meaning that as and when riba and zina fornication becomes evidence in a town verily they have made it permissible upon themselves the torment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can simply and easily look around ourselves in our own country in our own village in our own place we can easily find a lot of riba widespread in the country and one of the most terrifying items in our life is that when a person committing sins for example taking bribery or making fornication or zina or whatever you know he will feel a little bit of you know guiltiness and that feels we lead inshallah into into repentance and will make a person able to make repentance and tawbah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however when a person apply for a loan from a financial institution and then their loan is being approved with interest and he will feel a very happy man he will feel that his business can be easily expanded because of this new money comes in you know to his company and because of that reason he is feeling very good about the approval of the loan with interest no nothing in his heart feels that he is committing sins so because of that reason some of the scholars says why allah why the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam make a comparison between zina and riba in one of the hadith says that dirham riba yaqulhu ar-rajul wa huwa ya'lam ashaddu min 36 zaniyah one dirham of riba one dirham of riba is about 20 ringgit malaysian but because of nowadays our currency is quite you know, you know decreasing in value so maybe 30 ringgit i think you know 10 ringgit or 30 ringgit of riba 30 ringgit of riba and you know you are consuming the riba money their sins is equivalent the sins is equivalent to 36 times of committing zina 
So some of the ulama says, why the Prophet Muhammad make a comparison between riba and zina is because the zina, when someone committing zina, maybe he will repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because of that reason, riba is more severe as compared to zina. Uh, so that's why in this twin of faith for, two, for, for, for this year, with the theme of the awakening, we have to awake our heart, not only to restrain, reevaluate our salah, our supplication, our dua, and not only evaluate our relationship with our family and also with, with the community, but also must reevaluate how can we ensure there are substance of bless substance of bless that can bring bless in our life because in other hadith mentioned kullu lahmin nabata min suhtin fannaru awlabi meaning any flesh that has grown from impure wealth verily the hellfire is more deserving for them na'uzubillahim bidhalik so the hadith is related by Atabarani and some of the scholars of hadith mention that the hadith is not so authentic and weak in their narrators, chain of narrators. However, their, con their content is being supported by other, other evidences. And also Umar al-Khattab. We know that Umar al-Khattab is one of those companions of Sahaba who has been selected to be to get it to be to be in the paradise insha'Allah and also the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned that Umar al-Khattab if there is any prophet after himself Umar al-Khattab will be the one and one of the characteristic characteristic of Umar al-Khattab he said Tarakna tis'ata a'shari al-halal makhafat al-riba we, we mean he and also some of the great companions. We have left nine of ten opportunity and potential good business and tradings because we are too, earth, too afraid and terrified by this ribawi income, by this haram income. So that's why the Umar al-Khattab and the companions are at that level. So if we want to become one, we have to again look at and make a good analysis to the verse that I recited at first. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, ittaqullah. You can see clearly that when any verse in the Quran begins with the word Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, that means this verse carrying a heavy message to those who believe that they are a true believers if we are the true believers please pay attention to this message so that is the number one number two allah says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittaqullah so meaning meaning that if you are a true believers maybe sometimes it is still not sufficient for you to have a good attention to the things related to riba because those who want to become attentive to riba transactions you have to have two qualities the first alladina amanu true believers number two muttaqin you must know that when a person recites shahadatain meaning that ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah he becomes Muslim. Yeah? Muslim. Muslim is a very basic level of believers. And after you manage to do the good deeds and follow the right path that has been prescribed by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and stay away from the sins that has been prescribed by the Prophet and being commanded to be avoided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, you will become at the higher level, which is being called as mu'min. Qalatil a'arabu amanna 
قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا اسلمنا ولما يدخل الايمان في قلوبكم so some of the al arab the rural badwi people they say amanna we have been a believer we are becoming believer and allah say to the prophet say to them give a reply to them that you are no not yet a believer you are you have to say about yourself aslamna we already become became a muslim not yet a believer okay walamma yudkhil al-iman fi qulubikum iman is not yet entering into your heart so we have to be, be very careful that for those who want to 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 avoid yourself from this riba with transaction that will will tarnish the bless of allah to our life and to our property and to our wealth we have to have the quality of a true believer and we have a, have we, we need to have a quality of a muttaqin the highest level when when a mu'min complying with whatever commanded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will become at higher level and the level is being called as muttaqin muhsinin muslihin insha allah ta'ala so that is the, the thing that i want to share with you at first so we have to be like umar al khattab umar al khattab yeah and umar ask all of the ummah umar said la yabi fi suqina illa man qad tafaqqaha fi din do not enter into our marketplace except you have equipped yourself with the good knowledge of halal and haram but look at ourselves i have a couple of followers in my facebook page about 1.2 million some of them ask me a lot of questions about doing business in a halal way unfortunately most of them when they ask me they already entered into the transaction they already managed to to get a lot of income only then they ask me when they ask me i told them this is not halal from the thing that you gave me from the from the uh, what we call um, description and the, the 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 business contract that you've given me i don't think it is halal it is a scam blah 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 and then he become mad he mad at me oh ustaz you don't know about this business okay <laughs> so now you ask me and then you said i don't know and then i'm depending on your on your what on your information that you've given me and then he asked me okay why not you come to our place see our ceo and listen to our lecture okay sorry thank you very much i don't have time to do so but you see a lot of people nowadays especially in malaysia we are in a very you know difficult time you know especially with regard to our economy you know our currency is decreasing in their value and then we have a lot of thing that you know uh, the price high here and there you know so some of the people they have cash but they want to get a speedy cash a speedy return so because of that reason they are they are looking into some of the quick rich scheme unfortunately it is not only haram from the regulator perspective and legal perspective but it is also haram from the perspective of islam but now you are feeding your family we by using that by using that money by using that income so how can haram income will bring a bless to your family to our family when there is no bless what is actually the meaning of bless or barakah so the scholars when they are explaining the meaning of blessing some of them as a uh, they they are saying barakah is a term that means an increase and growth and also happiness happiness it is the establishment of divine goodness in something from which it exudes cannot be sent by people nor can it be outwardly quantified so in other words we can say baraka is the attachment of divine goodness to a thing so if it is focused in something little it increases so number one the characteristic of baraka if it occurs in something little 
small 10 cent, 1 ringgit, for example, it will increase in a very natural and halal way. And you feel that tiny thing is sufficient for your family and for yourself. And you will feel satisfaction when you are holding it. You know? So sometimes a person would need, you know, 10,000 ringgit, for example, for a monthly salary, and still not feel any satisfaction about it. So sometimes you have a BMW, you have, you have, you know, a Lamborghini or you have a Ferrari, but you don't feel the happiness has been, you know, destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like mentioned by Allah in the Quran, Yamhaqullahu riba wa yurbi sadaqa. Whoever involved in any earning and spending relating to riba, Allah will destroy the bless in that type of property or wealth or income or whatever. And whoever give arms, pay out zakah, charity, etc., Allah will increase their barakah. And the increase in barakah, if it is a small item or little, it will increase us. Number one, that is number one. Number two, and if it occurs in something much, it benefits. If you have a lot of money, and then you pay out zakah, you pay out sadaqah, and get it from a halal way, and you know you spend wisely in accordance to the Islamic teaching, etc., you will spread out the benefits. The benefit will not only for your own family, only, not limited to your own family, but will be, you know, uh, uh, spread out of your family and you will feel the happiness and the satisfaction. And number three, and the greatest fruits of barakah in all things are to use that barakah in the obedience of Allah. So there are three main characteristics of barakah. Occurred in the little things, increases. Occurred in, the, in many things or in, 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 in something big, it will spread out the benefits. And number three, the person will only use, us, use it, you know, for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is very important because we don't want, we are, sometimes we are being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become a successful, success, uh, uh, successful people. Uh, it's very difficult to, to say, you know, successful people. And then because of the successfulness, we become, we feel that the successful is coming from ourselves. The success is coming from our own efforts. We neglect the elements of divine intervention, divine, you know, uh, 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 yeah, intervention. We forgot that if we, we manage to, 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 to become a very successful businessman, for, ex for example, we forgot that the contract, the tender that we won is actually coming from the heart of a people. And the heart of the people is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happened to the microphone? Finish the time? I still have 11 minutes. <laughs> 11 minutes over there. Okay? So that is barakah. Okay. And then what else? What, what else do it? What, what else do we have to do in order to gain and obtain barakah? Okay? Apart from the knowledge about this is haram and this is halal, in the first place, we have to say that the intention, the niyyah, the intention. So we have to feel inside from the deepest thing in our heart, try at our best to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the heart which can we have a conscience about halal and haram and awake awake our heart you know so because in the Quran Allah mentioned about fa innaha la ta'mal qulub fa innaha la ta'mal absar walakin ta'mal qulub allati fi sudur is Allah mentioned in the Quran that it is not your eyes that is blind 
but your heart that is in your heart that is in your your body so that means our heart we must nurture our heart that so that the heart will have the eyes quote unquote conscience this is right this is wrong and only then we can apply the the, the advice from the prophets is tafti qalbak Sometimes there are people they are trying to apply this advice from the prophets by saying, "Okay, just follow your your heart." But if our heart is not so good, we are following something deviating from Allah and from the right path. Actually, so we have to understand is tafti qalbak. Ask and ask guidance from your own heart is when our heart they have already. Being nurtured and have the conscience, the right conscience. Only then we can follow our heart. And not only that, the Prophet also mentioned that al ithmu ma haka fil qalb, eh? Wa kyakrah an yatali alaihi nas. So if you want, if you want, if we want to understand what is the right feeling of heart, is when we commit any sins. The heart will feel, you know, burdensome. Only then we can know that our heart is still alive, you know. And not only that, wajakrah ayat tali anas. And when we commit any sins and we feel that we don't want anybody to know about this, so only then we 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 can know that our heart is still alive. In in terms of you know their iman, so we have to ensure the intention is coming from the right heart. Okay, so that is the first one. Secondly, in order for us to ensure the barakah, yes, we have to know what is the knowledge, the right knowledge. Before that reason, uh, Imam Al Bukhari mentioned in the in Sahih Al Bukhari, but Al Ain Qabla Al Amal. So one chapter you have to have. A knowledge before you can commit or you can do a good deeds. So we can simply performing a good deeds, but before we perform any good deeds, we have to ensure that we have the right knowledge on how to perform it. So Omar Abdul Aziz mentioned that when you are performing a good deeds without a proper knowledge and information about the the prescribed Ibadah, for example, you are actually committing more bad and harmful to yourself as compared to good. You know, man amila min ghairi ilmin kana ma yufsidu aktharu mima yuslah. So when you are performing any good deeds without any knowledge, you are actually performing something which bring more harms to your heart than good. So we have to ensure that we have knowledge. So today we are sharing some knowledge, but some of the lecture we are not sharing more more knowledge, except we want to share awareness. So sometimes knowledge can help, some other times awareness can help, because sometimes the people can know something but still incapable to commit and to perform the good deeds, even though he knows about the good deeds. That is why that is number three. Because we want to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to strengthen our our you know what we call uh, attentiveness to the hereafter. So sometimes when they are sometimes people when they are committing sins behind behind the people you know, so they feels that the people are not knowing about that. So because of that reason, there are no problem because they feels you know people will. We look at him as a you know good people, but in 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 actual fact, he is committing a lot of sins. But we need to have different CCTV. That is what we call ihsan. Anta abu dallah ka anna katara fa ilam takun tara fa inna hu yarak. We need to have this ihsan when you are performing any good deeds to feel that we are looking at Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and we. And if we fail to feel that Allah, we are looking towards Allah, 
feels that Allah is looking towards us. So that is the most important things in doing, in, 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 in asking from Allah a blessing or barakah in our life. And we have also to ensure, again number four, that the fara'id, all of the obligations has been fulfilled. And then just as per mentioned by the imam, that the nawafil, nawafil means the recommendations by the prophets means sunnah or sunnah or any 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 good deeds that has been recommended by other prophets muhammad peace be upon him has been also fulfilled and after that we have to ensure that we can uh, we can properly manage our intention but Suf imam sufyan al thawri mentioned that one of the most difficult item that i'm to scrutinize and i'm to teach is actually to teach myself to become sincereful so yes we can simply give charity give alms to the charity and give sadaqah to here and this and to that you know but yes at the time we give the sadaqah we can be one of the sincere people but what if after two years three years for example we are the one who give out you know 10,000 ringgit for example to be a mosque to be a musalla yes at the time of we are giving out the charity the money to the charity we feel that we are sincere but only after two years or three years we are being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's say that the people the community don't want us to become imam at that mosque or at that musalla if that happens, sometimes those people who given the money to the mosque, they will remind those community, oh, you have to, you have, I want to remind you that I'm the one who give the money to this mosque, you know. So that is after five years maybe, or maybe after three years. And then you wouldn't know the deeds that you, the good deeds that have been put last 10 years are now no longer counted as a good deeds from the perspective of Allah because our intention has been changed over the years so we have to contain our heart so this is why we need to again repeat it by repetitive and repetition to ask guidance from Allah المستقيم, again and again again and again so that we can contain the sincere the sincerity in our heart from begin from from the beginning into the last day of our life so that is very important for us to so scrutinize and then what else that we can do the 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 the, 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 the thing that we can do other than that is actually to give out sadaqah again sadaqah has been mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if a person would ask a second chance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to live in this worldly life and to do good deeds what will be the good deeds he, be, he, he will be chosen will be chosen that is sadaqah la asaddaq wa aku minas salihin oh Allah please give me a second chance so that I can give out sadaqah so the sheikh already mentioned about Subhanallah, zikr. When we say Subhanallah, we are actually planting a trees in the paradise. And you have to be attent attentive that when we have a trees out there in the paradise, it also means that we already booked some of the land in the paradise. It is not only a trees. So because there are some people, they say, Okay, what, what are the good things about having uh, tamar trees, date trees, you know, in the paradise? While we are not in the paradise? No? So when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you will have a trees in the paradise and you can easily planting it from here in this worldly life, easily, so you will also booking, make some booking of the land in the paradise but please be ensure that we have to contain our sincerity from the beginning into the last day of our life again okay so i think that's all that i can share with you today
in order to enlighten, give some enlightenment about uh, blessings in our life and also in our wealth. And again, I want to conclude by saying that again, all of us must again look at our knowledge, especially with regard to the earnings and spending, and especially in the highest priority to learn about what is riba, because whenever a person involved in riba transactions and you know you can say easily he is declaring war with Allah and the prophets just like the verse that I recited ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullah wa dharu ma baqiya min riba wa baqiya min riba in kuntum mu'minin fa in lam taf'alu hi if you are not avoiding yourself from any indulgement in riba transactions you will be declaring war with Allah and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Regardless how many good deeds you have performed, regardless how many juzuk you have recited during a day, regardless how many good deeds you have, how many charity that you have, you know, donated. But still, if this type of person indulge in ribawi transactions, their fate will still be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is now declaring war with Allah and the prophets and in in kitab jami' al-ahkam al-qur'an li liman qurtubi ibn abbas mentioned that while he is explaining about the verse about the declaring of war with Allah and the prophet he is explaining by saying those who indulge in riba in the hereafter will be given a choice will be given a choice to choose what are their weapons to fight with Allah and the prophets yuqalu li akil riba yawm al qiyamah khud silahaka lil harb you will be given a choice in the hereafter to choose what will be your weapon to fight Allah and the prophet na'uzubillahi min dhalik there is no way that we can fight and to have a war with Allah and the prophet in the hereafter while we are asking forgiveness from Allah we are asking shafa'a from Allah and from the prophets Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the izn of the with the izn of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i think that's all that i can share with you so may Allah bless us in in this event uh, and also i want to uh, thank the organizer to 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 have this very good uh, session and also events and i would like to ask uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of us who uh, being here and not only being here but also to be patient with the lectures and also to uh, overcome the sleepiness during the session you know and not only to overcome the sleepiness but also to overcome the non-focus to be a focus and to understand whatever the presenter uh, deliver so that is actually one of the tests to become a good Muslim. Wallahu alam, aqulu qawli hadha wa staffalazim wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.